the more we try to protect uh, the children, we're just projecting our own insecurities and fears and onto them yeah. to behave in a certain way so that we don't have to feel uh, less or react in such a way that we feel like we're failing them. So it's a lot of pressure on them. If we were always guiding them and giving them advice, they, they become reliant mm -hmm. on our point of view. The important part there is, is that your love is most shown when you're being honest with yourself. Yeah, and just love yourself enough that you don't need to project them onto them anything, all your hurts and pains, you know, deal with your own stuff so that they don't have to clean them up later. The intention behind it is to be the best people we can, the most authentic people we can be for ourselves so that they can have the freedom of being authentically themselves yeah. too. I feel I'm putting too much pressure on my children because I don't want them to go through the same pains as I did. But I feel they're not living their childhood. Is this a good thing or a bad thing? I don't want them to feel the pain. You know, it's a, it's a really beautiful question to ask because it shows that you're caring enough and that you're conscious enough that you want to embrace the best aspects of yourself and see your children live in the best aspects of themselves. And the first thing that comes to mind usually from our uh, more like um, say conditioned mind is to protect them, right? Because we, we, we want to protect them, that's how we're showing our love. And so we, 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 we want to pass on the wisdom of our own experiences in such a way that they wouldn't have to go through this. But you have to ask yourself, is it truly love? Is it truly a loving, kind, a, a, a loving act to, to guard your children away from experiencing their world? I had in my experience, my parents who have always cushioned me from any experiences outside that would be less than nice, right? And so I was, I was almost like in the greenhouse up until the age of 15, 16. And from them, it was a loving act to do that. They, they, they didn't want me to see the harshness of the world. They didn't want to put me under the pressure of what the world shows, right? And the, the hardest thing for me was when I was sent to UK and I was on my own without my parents' guidance, nobody's guidance, and the world and the harshness of the world crushed on me. And I am grateful more for the moments where I was unprotected than from the moments when I was protected because I have found my own resilience in it. And through that, I have established a relationship within myself when I, I became my own parent. And um, the, the, the important part there is, is that your love is most shown when you're being honest with yourself and that always that means that as we said I know that I don't know we can always share our experiences and that's their power bank that's what they can rely on but their actual um, mission is to show us another way <laughs> you know that, that our children are supposed to show us another way and that's what their mission is about so, yeah I yeah. Um, you know it comes down to I mean you can have so many different methodologies here and, and how to use it and comes to mind is Lao Tzu uh, which is to be uh, not involved because the more we try to protect uh, the children, we're just projecting our own insecurities and fears and onto them yeah. to behave in a certain way so that we don't have to feel uh, less or react in such a way that we feel like we're failing them. So it's a lot of pressure on them uh, and on yourself unnecessarily. And, you know, at times when you know, I, I reflect and I look at how I've um, behaved on my sort of what is best for them. And I, you know, and it takes a real, uh, it takes space and the humbleness to look at yourself and go, look, was that the right way or the wrong way? Is that what is right, what is wrong? The more you just do the work and you go into your heart and you know you're coming from love, um, you can really sense what is good for them of how they are evolving and how they're growing because of their maturity and and how uh, they behave especially feedback from other people you know you're like wow they, they're really from the heart that you know they're hugging they're connecting they're sensitive because energetically our their floor is our ceiling 
so they don't need to learn things from the beginning until the end like we did because they're already stepping on the shoulders of giants you know and um recognizing that, re recognizing that the divine design of a parental relationship in such a way that we, there's nothing, we, we're teaching each other, there's nothing that we, we, we teach them to a degree, they teach, it's, a, it's an ongoing it's an process, it's an exchange, yes. And you know, when we, you know, with children, they don't obviously do what we say, <laughs> I'm sure you know that by now. It's the example. Uh, they see what you do and that is, and I, and I say it to them, you know, when you have people who are going to say things and, you know, in adult life, don't watch what they say, just watch what they do. They already know that because they behave the very way because they emulate us, right? And that may be the most frustrating thing because we are mirroring and they're mirroring us. And that's what may trigger us because they're doing things that we don't want to see them do, but it's okay for us to do. So we're in contradiction with ourselves and with our own children. And then it invokes this you know, yeah. I'm not enough and they're doing this, you know. So it's the, it's the two, two children, get, it's two children yeah. fighting against each other. So when you nurture your inner child and when you, when you give it the love that it needs from you, you'll be able to give that love to the, to the child. So they learn to nurture their inner child. It's no, not a codependent relationship. Whereas if we were always guiding them and giving them advice, they, they become reliant mm -hmm. on our point of view. So uh, God forbid we're not there. That means that they, haven't, that they don't have that uh, relationship relationship anymore that was their like value scale so the most loving act you can do is you make your children as independent as possible yeah and just love yourself enough that you don't need to project them onto them anything all your hurts and pains you know deal with your own stuff so that they don't have to clean them up later and I'm actually reading a book called uh, raising an emotionally intelligent child which um, aligns to the value game we're creating to really create the buffer between parent and child to help parents remember, oh, that's what I need to do and help you for difficult situations. So you know how to best prepare your children so there's less muck they have to deal with later on and for that child to be able to share their emotions um, for you to understand. So this app really, we're doing our best to bridge the gap um, in order to make this easier because there's so much to remember. Even if you know it, you're triggered and you can forget in that moment. So um, this, this value game app is to really help you to have a better emotional connection with your child so that they can come to you at any point, at any crisis, and not go somewhere else, you know, that they can always count on you and come to you because they see you um, as an example. As an example, and they have an emotional connection rather than as an authority they need to be afraid of. And it's very difficult, we know, it's, you know to find it's, that balance. It's, it's, it's quite an art to find that balance, I must say, but the, the intention behind it is to be the best people we can, the most authentic people we can be for ourselves so that they can have the freedom of being authentically themselves yeah. too. And just be kind to yourself and loving to yourself. And then when they see you do that, then they know they can do the same for themselves.